Republicans hope to take in their July 4th fireworks, celebrating the end of Obamacare, but that got rained out by intra-party fighting. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell now says if Republicans cannot agree, he will have to work out a deal with Democrats. So if Republicans reach across the aisle, will Democrats respond? Joining me now is Senator Bernie Sanders, independent of Vermont. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. Let's start with health care. You just heard Ben Sass, the senator from Nebraska. He's encouraging his fellow Republicans to repeal Obamacare now and then at a later date to come up with a re replacement if they can't come up with a repeal replace at the same time. If Republicans go down this path, will Democrats be willing to work with them on the replacement? Well, the answer is that uh, I have a lot of respect for Senator Sass, but that idea is an absurd idea. As you pointed out, uh, this Congressional Budget Office uh, indicated that if you simply repeal the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, you will throw 30, you will throw 32 million Americans off of health insurance, 10 percent of the population of the United States. For seven years, the Republicans have been talking about a repeal mechanism. They haven't agreed yet. If you throw, Jake, 32 million people off of health insurance, what doctors who have studied this issue say, that tens of thousands of people every single year will die. What we have got to do, which is common sense, which is what the vast majority of the American people want us to do, is to say, okay, what are the problems? How do we work together to solve them? And we know what the problems are. The Affordable Care Act, under the Affordable Care Act, deductibles are too high, co-payments are too high, we pay the highest prices in the prescri for prescription drugs, of any major country on earth, one out of five Americans can't even afford the medicine they need. Those are some of the problems. We're very weak in terms of primary health care. Millions of Americans, even those with insurance, can't find a doctor or a dentist when they need one. Let's put those issues on the table and figure out how we deal with them in a bipartisan manner. So, now, so second of all, what we should recognize, which is not talked about in Congress at all, is why it is that we are the only major country on earth, Jake, I live 50 miles, I'm talking to you, 50 miles away from the Canadian border. Somehow they manage to provide health care for all of their people at a significantly lower cost per capita than we do, and so does every other major country on earth. There is a lot to be talked about. Of course it can be done in a bipartisan way. But you don't throw tens of millions of people off of health insurance in order to give $500 billion in tax breaks to the richest people in this country, so, to insurance companies and drug companies. Just for the record, some of those millions that would not have health insurance would be choosing not to have health insurance because there'd no longer be uh, a, a fine. But let me ask you about the ones who would well, be Well, wait, wait, wait a minute, Jake, 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 Jake. Let me just, for I'm, the record. I'm, I'm pivoting to the that Medicaid. That is true. I'm, yeah, go ahead. I understand that. But that is true. But again, we are the only nation that doesn't cover all those people. You have today, you're right, 21-year-olds who are feeling great. They never get sick. They're healthy. They go out, they get hit by a bus. Their life is destroyed because they're going to have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars paying for that. In my view, so as a nation, yeah, we should join every other country, guarantee health care to all. I want to get to that in one second, but I just want to ask you to clarify. You, I've heard you say this before about tens of thousands of Americans will die. Where does that come from, and can you explain how they will die if they don't have insurance? Sure. Uh, the answer is it comes from PolitiFact, uh, which, you know, tries to verify what public officials say. Uh, last week, just on a Sunday show, I made that point. PolitiFact checked it out, and what they ended up saying during the week is Sanders was right. And they listed a dozen different studies. Uh, people can go to my website, uh, sanders.senate.gov, and get that information. A dozen different studies from scientists and doctors say what is fairly obvious. Jake, if you have cancer, if you have heart disease, if you have diabetes, and you don't have any health insurance, you know what? There is a likelihood you will die. And what they said is that if you throw one of the studies, one of the studies, said that if you throw 23 million people off of health insurance, which is what the House bill did, up to, no one knows exactly the number, up to 28,000 people a year, right. a year, will die from that decision. So what we're talking about is a disastrous bill. And second of all, what I would say, Jake, there's something really weird that when you have the AMA, the, medic, the doctors, you have the hospital associations, you have the AARP, you have almost all of the healthcare organizations who know something about healthcare opposed to this bill, uh, Leader McConnell still refuses to hold hearings to hear from doctors and nurses uh, and from hospital executives.
So I, I want to ask you, um, first of all, when you're back in this, when you were on this program in March, you said you were going to introduce your Medicare for All bill, uh, which would also explain how to pay for it. Uh, you haven't introduced it yet. Is there a time frame for that? Because I think the American yeah. people, especially people who want to hear about your plans for single payer, want to know how exactly it can be paid for. Sure. And the answer is we are going to introduce it literally as soon as we're through with this debate. I don't want to confuse the two issues. Medicare for all, which is simply an expansion of Medicare, for, so we, it's not just for seniors, but for everybody, uh, will be saving middle-class families substantial sums of money, uh, and it will be guaranteeing health care to every man, woman, child in this country. Right now, though, I want to say, short term, if we're going to re, uh, improve the Affordable Care Act, this is what I think we should do short term, while we go to Medicare for all longer term. Short term, you need a public option in 50 states. So if people are not happy with their private insurance, they can get a public option. Short term, we should lower the age of Medicare eligibility to 55 years of age. And short term, I hope we can work with Republicans to end the absurdity of us paying the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Longer term, we need a Medicare for all, and I will introduce that as soon as this debate is over. I want to ask you uh, about the FBI looking into Burlington College and a land deal there and financing around it from the time when your wife, Jane Sanders, was president of the college. You and your wife recently retained lawyers. Um, I guess the fundamental question for you is, did you or anyone on your staff reach out to the bank to approve any loans related to this transaction? Absolutely, is, is of course, absolutely not. And in fact, let's be clear, uh, five years, five years uh, after uh, my wife left Burlington College, and she left it in better shape than it had ever been in, five years after, guess what happened? Right in the middle of my presidential campaign, I know this will shock the viewers, uh, the uh, vice chairman of the Vermont Republican Party, who happened to be Donald Trump's campaign manager, raised this issue and initiated uh, this investigation. Uh, I should also mention to you that just the other day, uh, the person who allegedly had made this statement that I had been involved in this land deal refuted that. He said, I never said that. That was in a paper in Vermont. So, you know, I, I think what you're looking at is something the Republican National Committee is very excited about. My wife is perhaps the most honest person I know. She did a great job at Burlington College. Sadly, we are in a moment where parties not only attack public officials, they have to go after wives and children. Uh, you know, this is pathetic, and that's the way politics is in America today. All right, Senator Bernie Sanders, we're going to have to leave it there. Happy Fourth of July to you. We appreciate your time today.